For some time, I have been engaged in a research project together with four fellow historians residing in Germany, in Poland, in Belarus, and in Australia. Our joint project is designed to depict landscapes of death, or to use the term by the Austrian historian Martin Pollack, contaminated landscapes. We aim to shed light on the murder sites of the Holocaust and the sites of other heinous crimes perpetrated by the Germans and their collaborators. This is a new, steadily growing area of Holocaust scholarship. In autumn of last year, we embarked on a journey to Belarus, following the route of a German-Austrian Order Police Battalion 322, which in the wake of Operation Barbarossa, murdered um, more than 10,000 Jewish men, women, and children, in most cases in secluded but easily accessible forest areas. In Minsk and Mogilev, we visited the sites where in September 1941, psychiatric patients were selected by the SS as guinea pigs to test supposedly termed more humane, that is, less taxing killing methods than open-air shootings. The first experiment in Minsk using explosive turned out to be unacceptable. The second experiment in Mogilev using car exhaust fumes containing carbon monoxide was more successful. As a result, New, larger, and more efficient stationary gassing installations were designed to put into use in the extermination camps of Belzec, Sobibor, and Treblinka. They facilitated the murder of more than 1.6 million Jews by Carmen Monocide. The links between the so-called euthanasia program and the final solution are well known. 94 employees uh, served as experts in the running of the extermination camps of Operation Reinhardt. The Mogilev experiment also led to the construction of new mobile gas van to be deployed in the conquered territories of the Soviet Union and other areas. In Belarus alone, between 20 and 30,000 Jews and other victims suffered a harrowing death in gas vans. I will provide you with a short historical account of the killing experiments in Minsk and Mogilev and show you a few photos on the murder <coughs> and memorial site um, shot by um, Berlin historian Dr. Alexander Klei. From the outset, the architects of the final solution showed concern for the psychological well-being of their willing executioners. Clear instructions were given to ensure that the killers came to no harm. At all murder sites, coveted schnapps on cigarette rations were distributed. Excursions and other forms of entertainment took place in order to wipe out the impressions of the day. Films, cabaret, comedies and bunter abende, lively evenings, uh, often turning into drunken orgies, enjoyed particular <coughs> popularity. A festive atmosphere prevailed at the open-air shootings. And yet, it became quickly apparent that marksmen had to be relieved of their duty when the sight of, massac of a massacre induced vomiting or signs of nervous collapse. Some reactions frequently occurred when the shooter's face arms or uniforms were hit by pieces of bone or brain from the victims and occasionally resulted in eczema and other psychosomatic symptoms. As as medical experts and reliable university professors were asked for advice and assistance, the patients were cared for in special wards and clinics sanatoriums and holiday resorts. <laughs> Visiting Minsk in, in mid-August 1941, Heinrich Himmler, 
Reichsführer of the SS and chief, the chief architect of the final solution, had a tight schedule. On the morning of the 15th of August, he attended a model execution which he had requested. About 100 men and women, Jews and non-Jews, were shot. The site of the massacre, so some witnesses maintain, caused Himmler nausea and symptoms of collapse. Afterwards, he briefly addressed the shooters. He spoke, as so often, of the heaviest task the SS had to perform to eliminate <laughs> the Jews and all other enemies of Germany. A visit to a military collection camp followed, where thousands of um, Russian prisoners of war were herded together under appalling conditions, under uh, the open sky, most of them condemned to death. He then enjoyed a refreshing lunch break. The tour continued. No. There's one missing, doesn't matter. Um, he then continued to tour along the Jewish ghetto, which just has been established by the military um, administration. And in the late <laughs> afternoon, he arrived at Novinki, six kilometers north of Minsk, at the mental clinic. In 1918, Novinki had been set up as a kolkhoz, a state farm, as a psychiatric labor colony with 300 acres of farmland, extensive uh, livestock, fruit and vegetable gardens. Himmler ordered the immediate confiscation of the agricultural estate to be handed over to the police and SS in Minsk. He also instructed neighbor to search uh, for a more humane killing method than shooting and to put the clinic's patients out of their misery. It took one month to prepare the ex experiments. Dr. Alfred Wittmann, as head of the chemical and biological department of the Reich Office of Criminal Investigation, <coughs> was involved, he was already involved in the T4 uh, operation was sent to Bielorussia. He brought with him 250 kilos of explosive, fuse wires and a detonator, as well as gas pipes, uh, hoses and other special equipment required to carry out the experiments. Shortly after their arrival, about 225 patients, Jews and non-Jews, were selected by the clinic staff and brought to a nearby secluded edge of the forest. Two Unterstände, dugouts, once set up by the Soviet army, used as a detonation chamber. Um, within the uh, very small uh, dugouts, explosives were placed, installed on the ground, and installed and at the walls, and then connected with fuses. Then Neber, the commander of the Einsatzgruppe B and in charge of the experimentation, um, detonated or um, put the detonator on. And then what happened was a horrific catastrophe. The explosive effect were so horrific that the dugouts were blown apart, parts of the body could be found meters away, and even some on, um, had to be removed from treetops. Such an experiment was, to my knowledge, never repeated again. We did not succeed the find, to, to find the murder site. However, we were permitted to visit the psychiatric clinic called today the Belarus Research and Practice Center for Mental Health, caring for more than 1,000 patients. Passing along the statue of Ivan Pavlov, the famous Russian scientist and 1904 Nobel laureate in medicine, 
waiting anxiously for quite a long time in the overcrowded entrance foyer. We were cordially greeted by the deputy director and the chief um, psychiatrist. Now, how does... I hate these things. <laughs> yeah. They showed us copies of historical documents the originals of which we later accessed in the State Archive of Minsk. They showed us photos, among them the photo of Dr. Anatalia Akimova, a Jewish physician, the <coughs> former clinic's director. Dismissed in November of 1941, she was incarcerated into the ghetto of Minsk and she was one of the very few who survived the final solution. In 1946, during the first war crimes trial in Minsk, they gave evidence on the murder of the mental patients. And at the end of our conversation, another staff member arrived who could guide us to the place where a stationary guessing installation was set up following the failed experiment with explosive. We strolled through a redeveloped area along a, new, along a new church and monastery complex, passing a tourist market before arriving at the former murder site. The building housing, housing once the guest chamber had been de, uh, de, um, abolished and replaced by a modern apartment building still under reconstruction. Patients were guests in rapid succession. Already, already at the end of October 1941, Novinki and the entire area around Minsk was declared, and I quote, free of all idiots. The clinic was, that was a term officially used by the military and civilian administration. The clinic was closed, transformed into the headquarters of the German gendarmerie, the rural police. There was no memorial to the victims. The next day, we left for Mogilev, located in eastern Belarus, a region which had close to the <laughs> front line remained under military administration throughout the war years. Where is that stuff? Is that yeah. These are original yeah, uh, photos from the German um, uh, administration on the new ghetto which was to be set up at the uh, river Nieper. In August 1941, about 7,000 Jews, stigmatized which with huge yellow stars, were driven into this newly set up ghetto um, and immediately mass executions commenced. On the 18th of September, Niebuhr and his team carried out the guessing experiment on the site of the local mental clinic. A commando of the order police sealed off the murder site. A laboratory room was turned into an improv improvised <coughs> guest chamber. The windows were bricked over. Only a glass window at the entrance door permitted a view into the interior. Two small holes were hammered into the brick wall, allowing the insertion of the pipes. They transported the exhaust fumes from running engines of two police cars into the guest chamber. Some of you might have seen the short film footage of the guessing experiment in Mogilev, a film presumably commissioned by a neighbor and discovered at the end of the war in his house in Berlin and shown at the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunal.
what the film does not show, what the film does not show is what Wittmann described 1960 in, in a court with these words, I quote, once a patient selected as incurable and socially dangerous had been locked up in the laboratory room, neighbor gave, neighbor gave order to start the engine. He then went to the entrance door and watched through the window the effects of the poison gas. Returning after five minutes, he declared nothing appeared to have happened. He had another look after eight minutes, still no result. We came to the conclusion that the engine of the car was not powerful enough. Neve gave order to use the engine of the truck of the order police. It then took only five minutes. Before the people were unconscious, we left both engines running for 20 minutes, quote, ends. I don't have time to tell you what happened with these main perpetrators after the war. What I would like to stress is uh, one aspect which has been hardly taken into account by a research, namely the responsibility and role played by the German army in the killing of mental patients. Um, from the very beginning, the army was involved in the murder of mental patients, first during the Polish campaign in the annexed territories in the newly declared Reichsgauer of Danzig, Westpreußen and the Warteland, and then in the conquered territories of the Soviet Union and other areas in <coughs> Hitler's Europe. Adopting the principles and the vocabulary of the Operation T4, they used the same terminology as the T4 killers. Equally, if not more important, was the military quest to confiscate and to turn vacated mental asylums over in military hospitals. Military administration hastened to reduce food ration, rations, to dismiss clinic staff, and finally to propose the closure of clinics. At some places, the SS and police were requested to dispatch the execution squads. If such requests were rejected, military administration were advised to select the marksmen out of their own, own ranks. The intent and the obligation to murder patients was summed, summed up in a short entry in the war diary of General Halder, the chief of general staff of the ground forces. After discussing with General Wagner, the quartermaster general, the question of mental asylum Halder recorded on the 20th of September 1941, and I quote, Russians regard feeble-minded as holy, even so, killing necessary, quote ends. From here, it was only a small step to include a growing number of German soldiers unwilling or unable to continue to fight, suffering from severe mental disorders into the euthanasia programs. A final note, the SS test killings in Minsk and Mogilev in September 1941 were, as the Yad Vashem historian Leonard Ryan has shown, an integral part of the process of the development and refinement of the killing methods to bring about the final solution what mattered was to find and to deploy the most effective lethal weapons which would make the task of the executioners easier, namely the task of unleashing the genocide against Europe's Jews. Nevertheless, the Holocaust by gas uh, <laughs> did not the Holocaust by bullets, the term coined by the French priest Father Patrick de Bois. Most Jews in Belarusia and other parts of the occupied territories of the Soviet Union were murdered during open-air shootings. The landscape photos are missing. Okay, thank you.